skipped ahead again and I got the throttle body pretty much installed. Uh, it's just a speed match the throttle body. Um, I got the part number somewhere, just not with me at the moment. I'll post the picture of it at the end, end of the video. But uh, yeah, I got the water pump in. I just got out of the Riley's. It's nothing special. Same thing with the bypass hose, it's brand new. I got the thermostat, also from O'Reilly's, I think. And I pretty much got most of the stuff in that I need. I still gotta put the thermostat housing on and put the two cooling temp sensors. And I got some plugs I gotta use to screw into here, into uh, the unused ports. I'm not using them, I so just plug them up with a natural thing, not just a bar with a cap on it. Uh, yeah. I got new radiator hoses too for the radiator, but I'm not going to put any of that in until I get the fan kit. Because I'm going to upgrade to an electric fan. But uh, yeah. I'm using the stock idle air controller. I had to uh, enlarge the holes though because they don't exactly fit onto uh, the holes for their uh, this don't exactly fit on the uh, throttle body. Uh, apparently Mopar does sell a four barrel throttle body for this spin take so you all want to use all your stock stuff you can but since this is 1994 I'm going to have to use the standalone anyway. Ow. Hot. And I got the the TPS sensor that is supposed to uh, go with it. Uh, to drive the coil, I got an HEI uh, ignition module that I'm probably just going to bolt on to uh, the fender. Alright guys, I had to uh, take care of something real quick, but uh, I skipped ahead again a little bit. I put the pull neck on, the heater hose thing, a couple other little things. The, Cool temp sensors and I permanently got the plugs and everything installed. New temp, air temp sensor, getting ready to drop the alternator bracket on. But uh, yeah. So this is pretty much how the engine's gonna look, minus the fuel rails. Looks very, very good. I like, I like that. Anyway, like I said, I got an HGI uh, ignition module to drop the uh, coil. I'm just going to bolt it to the fender and just have the wire going through the stuff. So, uh, yeah. I still got to put the, the headers on. I ended up fixing this control arm. I bought a one of them big old uh, electric impact guns that you plug to a wall to fix it. So, hopefully, my truck will start driving straight again. Pretty much that's how it is. I got the sensors all at uh, I think AutoZone. Same thing with the filler neck and the thermostat. The thermostat didn't have one of those little jiggle pins in it, so I drilled a very the smallest size hole I can just to aid in uh, bleeding out the system. Well, air, mostly air will come out of that, not uh, cooling. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Truck is 99. Well. 92% done. I still got to water up the ECU and fill it up with water, put the air uh, radiator back in with the electric fan. So, and uh, redo the exhaust. There's uh, the pipe right there is uh, cracked. That's why it was leaking. I thought it was falling off the header again, but uh, now the pipe's leaking. So, uh, let me put this bracket back on before it tears up my AC lines and I'll put the belt on and the whole front dress of the engine is done. This thing looks this thing looks incredible. Oh, uh, I'm not using the stock map sensor. I'm using a GM style map sensor which is why I got this barb installed. I'm just going to probably zip tie it to uh, the harness up here. Yeah, it's a three bar map sensor, so if I decide to super uh, do any type of force induction with a supercharger or turbo on this engine, I can. Another reason why I didn't go with the insane camshaft either. So, uh, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I ordered a uh, an aftermarket uh, throttle cable bracket because the my stock one I pipe would make work, but you know, what's twenty bucks? The damn the bracket was twenty bucks, so yeah, I'm gonna have to make an adapter to uh, run this type of uh, cable on it. Which is partly why I got the bolt in here. Uh, I got some extra metal. I'll be able to make a thing for that. So that that'll be something to keep an eye out for. But uh, yeah, let me put this uh, bracket on, and I'll show y'all pretty much the finished result. Y'all, so back in. Back in previous videos, I've mentioned something called the Kager mod, and basically what it is is you take the lower pan off the off the intake, the Kager intake, and you see these uh, runners going right along the wall. What some people do is they take a cutoff wheel and some other uh, uh, tools, and they trim these uh, runners flush to the walls of the other runners because um, the pan sits pretty much flat across here and you can see that the is a lot of restriction for the air to kind of do almost a 90 degrees or 180 degree to go back up into the uh, actual runners to go go uh, to the heads so you shorten that up then you clean it up and make it more round and Make the air flow easier into the runners and it's supposed to help with torque and horsepower and stuff like that. Though some people debate what say is pretty negligible. I personally don't know. That's why I want what they use. That way I know for sure. Know for sure. Um, this plate's also steel where the intake's aluminum. So they sell an aluminum plate too to help with the uh, difference in expansion. And they also sell... Uh, different gaskets like this one's metal so this one I'm probably just gonna throw back on there because the rubber ones and paper ones that they sell they tend to blow then another problem is that um, these bolts tend to back out like I said due to the expansion so you want to make sure you probably put Loctite on these bolts too when you put them in if you were if you do decide to do the Kega mod or just reuse the stock intake. Uh, earlier intakes, this divider ball right here would come across the whole, the whole um, intake. And some people cut that down, but the later model intakes don't have that, or it stops right below the ports for the throttle body. Anyway, I wanted to share that with y'all in case y'all decide you want to save the money and just reuse the intake or make the intake a little better but uh, personally I I prefer the dual plane style that I have so I'm pretty sure that, that will overall be a better choice so alrighty see you in the next clip Guys, yeah, so I got the front dress back on. Uh, yeah, you got the belt installed. That's how the belt's routed. It starts from here, goes up, up, down, up, around, on top, around, and back. So that's the belt route pattern. As I'm not using an electric fan, so I'm not worried. I'm not using the mechanical fan, so I'm not worried about this. I'll take this protector off. But uh, yeah, that's how it is. Still gotta put this trigger cap in. I'm waiting for spark plugs to come in the mail. And uh, spark plug wire sets I got. I gotta drop the harm spec down in between here, but I'll probably do that after I get the fuel injectors installed. So, uh, yeah. I gotta get that, uh, might as well put this hose in. I'm just reusing the old one that was there. But, uh, 
that's pretty much it. This motor is about ready to run. I just gotta put new oil, drain the old oil out that has all the brake cleaner and stuff in it, and put new oil in it, run it for a little while, then tra change the oil again. I'm just using 1030 uh, Mobile One uh, high mile synthetic. If y'all, uh, if y'all are wondering. I am going to have to put the figure out where I'm going to put the ground wires. I think I'm going to put one right here on that bolt, either that or up here. I'm not 100% sure. Then I also need a ground strap going from the motor to the body as well. That way I know the is enough uh, current uh, enough cable for the current amount of current that uh, is going to be drawn, which isn't a lot, but more than stock considering I'm running two computers. You know, this one is literally just supplying power to a couple sensors and a few injectors. But uh. I'm still, still trying to figure all that out. I got a new multimeter that I can, that I'm going to use to figure out where the power is going to. That way I know what uh, where I can uh, tap into and what to avoid. Yeah, this motor is about ready just to go. I can't wait to hear it, especially that cam. I'm hoping this cam sounds like a like a charger or something like that, like a like an old school charger. I'm hoping this cam sounds like that'd be great. Not quite cammed out like you hear with like a like an actual race car, but like, you know, does not sounding like a truck either. You know, this truck didn't sound too bad to begin with, but I want it to sound like it's something, not just a old worn out truck motor and I also can't wait to hear the secondaries open when I uh, stomp on it yeah so that's pretty much uh, it for today um, y'all know the drill like comment subscribe um, follow me on Twitter my username is in the description uh, be safe have fun and don't forget to tip your waitress